Anthony Fasano from the Engineering Management Institute, and I'm excited to be here in Philadelphia at Burns Engineering, where we're going to talk to Laura Hughes, the Director of Business Development, about business development skills for engineers. Let's do it. Anthony Fasano from the Engineering Management Institute, and I'm excited to be down here in Philadelphia at the offices of Burns Engineering, and I'm here with Laura Hughes, Director of Business Development for Burns. Laura, welcome to the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk today about business development because it's something that many engineering professionals have to do in their career, whether they're doing engineering still or not, mm -hmm. but it's not easy. It doesn't come natural, and it can be difficult. So. Just to start off, Laura, yep. we're going to go through your career a bit, but what do you do today for Burns? Maybe just give our audience okay. some insight to that. So today I'm our Director of Business Development, and that cuts across all of our market verticals. So we have uh, rail and transit, aviation, facilities and infrastructure, which covers our health care and higher education, and then also program management. So I'm responsible for driving the business development across all those sectors. Wow. Sounds like a lot. So, okay, <laughs> this is a lot to dive into yeah. here. Um, all right, so take us through your career. You went to school for engineering, correct? Yes, uh, I was civil engineer. I uh, graduated from the University of Iowa and uh, then really didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't grow up in a family of engineers, right. but I was good at math. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, it was. Uh, I didn't know what to do and started off almost right away in consulting engineering. Okay, yeah. you did. So yeah. you practiced as a civil engineer yeah, for a while. Yeah, practiced as a civil engineer for about seven years. Okay. So mostly uh, water wastewater engineering, some transportation engineering, and then I did go on uh, to project management, which was not more on the hard engineering side, but a little more on the uh, management and financial side. Okay, great. So when did the business development I guess we can start with when did the idea or the transition happen for you? Yeah, um, it wasn't something that I had uh, ever aspired to, I would say. Um, I think that I probably stood out to some of my supervisors. I think I was a little more outgoing than okay. some of the other engineers. Um, having said that, I think like a lot of mo a lot of people at that age, seven years into my career, um, not really outgoing in terms of social circles or professional sure. circles or anything like that. So didn't know how to get started and I was drug into it a little bit. I'd say maybe not quite kicking and screaming, right. but um, invited to go to some social functions for the engineering firm that I was working for at the time. Okay. Well, everything I've heard there is promising because I think most engineers that start to do business development probably didn't aspire to it, right. probably didn't have necessarily the networking skills or the networking built up. Yep. Um, so to that point, you were, yeah, that's, that was you, yeah, right? Yeah, that you was me. I was an engineer, yeah. got pulled into it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you get into it. Yep. Now, take us through that transition. What did it require of you in terms of getting good at it? Yeah, that was challenging. So what I didn't realize is, um, of course, engineering is challenging, fascinating, and there are processes and procedures that are fairly recognizable around performing engineering tasks. What I didn't realize is there's also processes and procedures around doing dis business development. Right. Um, you, you, can, you can say that certain people have a knack for it or have the personality for it, but there is some real rigor around actually doing business development. And once I understood that and was able to follow those processes, almost like engineering uh, processes, then mm. it started to become um, much more familiar and, and doable in bite-sized tasks. Right, that's awesome. Yeah. And that, that is also promising to hear as an engineer myself, yeah. anything that I feel goes through processes mm -hmm. or frameworks, mm -hmm kind of we can handle that yes, in terms of thinking exactly through it. Right. Yes, that's right. So if we can apply it to something that can be as scary as business mm -hmm. development for mm -hmm. an engineer, um, it sounds like for you that was something that made it more manageable. Yeah, it absolutely did. And what's, what's interesting to me is it can start off small. Um, as engineers, we are dealing with hopefully colleagues on a regular basis. And so part of that was just learning how to have a more in-depth, informative conversation maybe with a colleague to start off. Oh, I see. Um, instead of around a project, sit back at the end of the project that you're working on with a colleague and say, so what else do you have going on? 
and start talking to that colleague a little little bit more like they'd be a client. Right. Um, but the next step to that is when you're sitting with a client talking about a specific project, um, which as engineers I know we can get very focused on the task at hand. Right. Um, take a step back yeah. and, and at the end of that meeting with that client sit back and say, so what else do you have going on? And just that alone and then listen hmm. um, and try not to fill the, uh, the, the space all right. the time with words. That's great. Listen. Listen for the silence and yeah. give some silence yep. and pauses. So really it was about focusing on building your conversational skills. Building your conversational skills and also understanding that um, no one wants to be sold anything. Right. Um, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> so um, if you go in with that attitude, you'll probably fail. Um, one of the biggest attributes for me that I've learned and probably learned it from my mother is always having a sense of wonder about people. Hmm. I'm always fascinated, no matter the type of people I meet, I'm fascinated by what drives them, um, what makes them interesting. And if I go into conversations with clients that way, it's more of a conversation than it is a, a hard sell. Hmm. That's great. I'm sure that curiosity is invaluable in terms of what you do, yes, right? Yes, it is. Building relationships. It is. So a lot of our viewers and listeners, like I said, will be tasked with doing business development yes. as an engineer or technical professional. And you just gave us some great things that can help you. If there's a framework, if there's a process to follow, you know, working on those conversational skills. Was there any formal training that you went through? Yes. So um, I did go through a number of, I'll call them business development boot camps. Sure. Um, some of them were internal to the company that I was working for. Some of them were external, offered through various services. And you take little pieces from each one of those and, and you build what works for you. Right. Um, if it doesn't feel natural, if it doesn't feel genuine, then it's not going to work. Right. Um, so I did go through formal training. I still go through formal training. So. Here at Burns Engineering, we are implementing formal training for business development. Um, but we have seasoned professionals in that room as well because you still need those reminders. You always have something to learn. And so I'm actually looking forward to sitting in the training that we're going to be offering for those same reasons because I can always learn. I can always do a little bit better. Right. Yeah. That's great. So it has it has been helpful for you, and obviously yeah. Laura continues to do it, which is great. I'm a big, you know, continuous improvement, keep learning. Yep. Yep. Um, you can always learn new things, new strategies, new tools, whatever yep. it may be. So just to be clear now, Laura focuses on business development full-time at this point. Correct. That's correct. There are a lot of engineering professionals, including I'm sure many here at Burns, that do it in addition to their projects. Correct. Probably you work with all of them, I would assume, yes. in different capacities. Yes. Um, so that's something to think about as well, and, and we can have a conversation yeah. around that, which will, which will be helpful to a lot of our listeners. How... I don't know whether it's a recommendation you have for someone who's mm -hmm. trying to do business development and work on projects yes. or you know something that you do to, to work with those. Maybe mm -hmm. you could just talk about that relationship. Uh, so a couple different things. First of all, you have to have a manager that's supportive. Um, of, of you maybe stepping outside a little bit from, right. from your project work. Having said that, I mean the first, first, um, first step in any business development is to do and perform good work. Right. And, and repeat client business is a substantial portion of business development. Sure. Um, and so a lot of engineers right now are busy keeping those clients happy, which is a huge first step. Um, and so after that, can you sidestep within a client? If you're working on projects and that's eating up 90% 90, 90 of your time, how do you take that little bit of time that you have and leverage it? And uh, oftentimes what that meant for me was just sidestepping. If I have client X um, who we're doing great work for, that client probably has his or her own networks. And so can I ask that client who I'm doing good work for to make some introductions on my behalf to other folks in their network? If you're doing good work mm. for them, nine times out of 10, they're willing to do that. Um, what do they say? Most clients, I think it's nine out of 10, are willing to give recommendations like that, right. but only two out of 10 engineers ever ask. Yeah, that's so. true. <laughs> and I think what's important to highlight there is I know a lot of engineering professionals that might say, I don't do business development, I right. just do my work on my projects, but in essence, they're doing business they development. They are doing business development, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, repeat business is the um, least expensive form right. of business development. Right. Um, and so I that, that would be first and foremost in anyone's mind, absolutely. That's great. Um, it's, it's a good tip because yeah. it's valuable and we have to remember that. Yeah, we have to remember that. It's, it's like that low-hanging fruit, right? You absolutely. could put a lot of money and effort into trying to get new clients, which of course 
companies do, yes. but you have all your existing clients that you can just get more work from. Yep, yep. So yep. that's, that's something right. to think about. So, so let's talk a little bit more about your role okay. in terms of, you know, your approach mm -hmm. and, you know, you work for Burns, which is multi, you have multi disciplines here, yes. a lot of different sectors as yes. you outlined earlier. So how do you know where to focus or where to work on? Yeah. In your, it's not like you have an engineering project to work on when you come correct, to work. Correct, correct. So I oftentimes say I had the luxury of of time to do some of those extra steps that maybe some of the engineers that are having to be billable right. um, don't necessarily have the time to do. Um, having said that, one of the things that was the most challenging for me as an engineer stepping into business development is realizing that I don't have to be a technical expert in every field. Right. So <laughs> oftentimes engineers are very uncomfortable, myself included in the early days, speaking about something that you're not personally trained in and haven't had personal project experience in. But if you're going to have the breadth and depth of a career in business development that you need, right. you've got to step outside of being that technical expert in that narrow field, but you do have to leverage your relationships within the company that you work in. Mm, I see. Yeah. So I guess to do that, you have regular conversations or you're continuing yeah. to learn about the different sectors here. Yes, yes. And realizing that when I'm meeting with a client, it's okay to say, I don't know. Right. Uh, it's the perfect reason to go back with somebody who does know. Right. Um, and so stepping outside of your comfort zone, outside of your technical expertise, understanding it's okay to say you don't know and follow up, um, those are really big keys. That's great. And again, going looking at it from the engineering yes. perspective, let's say I'm an engineer and an mm -hmm. expert in a certain technical field, yep. and you approach me and say, Anthony, I'm going to a meeting with the prospective client mm -hmm. and I need you to come with mm -hmm. me. What should I do to prepare for that meeting? Uh, learn as much about that client as you possibly can. Um, I'm assuming because I'm bringing you that you may already know, or um, I've learned that there you have a talent or a skill set that that client will value. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, come to armed with questions that you can ask the client. Oftentimes. I, I find um, people that are getting into develop, business development come in with an agenda, their own agenda. Right. Uh, <laughs> that may not be at all what the client wants to hear or at all their agenda. So uh, I like to come in with more of an open mind, yep. uh, a little less of an agenda, and with some questions. And maybe with those questions, I can bring out what the client's really looking for, which is why I'm there. That's great. So you're trying to understand their needs so yeah. you can try to address them yeah. the best yeah. you can. As opposed to trying to fit what I do into what I think they need. Right. That's great. And do you have regular meetings where you speak with the different engineering technical yes. leaders or directors here? Yes. How does that yes. work? Um, what's fascinating about it is oftentimes, for example, we have rail and transit and we have aviation and we used to say, well, those groups never need to get together and talk because aviation's aviation and right. rail and transit's rail and transit. However, um, it doesn't matter what sector you're working in, you can learn from each other. And it's nice to be able to sit back and play the what ifs with a larger group of people. So oftentimes when we have those meetings, we'll have someone report out. Um, they'll say, I was in meeting with client X and we had an excellent meeting and mm. we're gonna follow up with these five things. But if you have that larger, broad, broader audience to bounce things off of, then there's somebody in the room that's gonna say, hey, have you thought about this? Because I did this and this really worked. So ask for advice, bounce things off a broader audience. Um, and I think you'll have further success. Um, the other thing I would say is never go into a meeting alone. Oftentimes people feel like they need to own a client right. or need they can prove, prove to do it on their own. Um, and two sets of ears are always better than one. Um, That's great. Because things that I hear um, someone may not hear or pick up on and vice versa um, because we all filter through our own lens. Yeah, that's great advice. I mean, having another person with you can always, they might yeah. be listening to it in a different way Absolutely. from a different perspective, yep. which can bring a lot of value to the table. And so a couple things that I know from my career, and it sounds like um, Laura has kind of confirmed here, is that, you know, when you work for a multidisciplinary firm, there's a lot of opportunities for cross-marketing yes. between the different disciplines. Yeah. And that's helpful in multiple ways. If you're a project engineer and you can now provide your clients with other services, it makes you more valuable to them as a whole, right? Absolutely. And yeah. so that's something that I think, 
this was kind of Laura reminded me of this when we talked about you know talking to the between the different sectors, right? Yes. So learning, I know you're busy in your own projects, but taking the time to learn about the other disciplines, the other sectors, the other leaders in your yes. firm can help you tremendously when you go out into the field and you're talking with clients and a client says, I'm working on this site and we have an issue with an environmental issue and you can say, oh, well, we have a great environmental team. In yes. fact, I can hook you up with you know, Mary in our office and she can walk you through some of that. Absolutely. Keep your ears wide open. Listen outside your discipline. That's for sure. And I always say I like to be able to go into a client and say yes. So maybe right. they don't need, <laughs> maybe they don't need necessarily um, what my technical expertise is. Maybe they don't need necessarily what Burns Engineering does right now. But I want to help them get what they need, right. and um, that reciprocates way down the road. Um, and so I think that's something that you always have to have in the back of your mind. Be a um, resource. You're a resource, right? And and that'll come back. Um, that that is the one thing about business development. You have to have patience. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would, I always tell people, uh, I'm a paid optimist yeah. um, <laughs> because I have to be optimistic right. in this business, um, because it's, it's a lot of work, yeah. um, and a lot of persistence. You're not going to walk in someone's door. They're going to meet you for the first time and they're going to hand you $10 million worth of work. Right. Um, people, people hire people and work with people that they like and they trust. And that takes time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's it, right? People want to work with people they trust, people that they like, yep. people that have helped them. Yes. Right? Whether it means that they paid you for help or you just offered up a resource. That's exactly right. Right? Yeah. And so it's the same thing at the Engineering Management Institute, what we try to do. I'm not going to go up to a CEO and say, come and buy training from us. Exactly. I'm going to say, we've done a lot of training, and if you're building programs and you need some advice, I can certainly, you know, give me yes. a call, right? And I can give you some advice. But what happens over time, of course, is they become comfortable with you. Yes. They know you're knowledgeable on certain topics. Yes. And they want to reach out to you. Yep. And I think a big thing that, I mean, at least I've even taken away from our conversation here is the importance of the, the multidiscipline approach and, you know, the Absolutely. different sector leaders understanding each other. Absolutely. And you're kind of one of the facilitators yeah, of that. Yeah, you've, you've got to connect those dots. Right. And, and it's A, it's not natural necessarily if you're a junior engineer, and, and B, um, Sometimes if you haven't experienced, you don't see the need for it. Right. Um, and over time, um, clients clients like to hear, they like to learn. One of the things that, um, uh, for example, we work in the aviation industry. And so a lot of our aviation clients uh, can benefit from some of the things we've learned in the rail and transit industry. Oftentimes they don't get to step up our clients and see outside of the industry they're in. Right. And so that's one of the values that we can oh. bring to them. Um, and that helps them. That's a perspective they don't have. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, I think that engineers, and I, I keep mentioning this because I think that engineers forget the benefits that having multiple disciplines under yeah. one roof Absolutely. provide in terms of business development and yeah. getting more work yes. on, or more projects or yeah. whatever the case may be. And even if you don't, you might be listening or watching and saying, well, we don't have multi-discipline. We have one discipline. We're small. Right. You can still kind of like Laura referenced that before, make build a network of other people Absolutely. that you can refer them to or that you can team up with and who knows what happens in the future. Those firms might eventually come together or you may yeah. eventually build a new sector or a different division, but you're continuing to be a resource yes. so that if they say to you, I need a surveyor and you don't have one, you can say, well, we work with XYZ all the time. Yes. And that survey will probably the survey will probably reciprocate for you as well. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And and that comes across as honesty as well because if you don't have a discipline or you're not strong in a discipline, you absolutely don't want to say yes, we'll do it, and then not perform well, right? right? So it's much the the client will trust you more if you say, listen, we've got a couple um, mechanical engineers, but it's not our forte. Let me refer you to somebody who who can help you out, and that builds trust right there. That honesty. Again, it's being yeah. a resource, and yep. we keep getting back to that point. Yep. Be yep. a resource for the, your clients and prospective clients, right. and they're going to come back to you. Okay. Yeah, and listen, they may come back to you sometime for something you can't offer them. Yep. But you give them the resource, and then they're going to come back to you at other times for something you can offer. That's, that's exactly that's right. That's when you, you start to actually you know make sales eventually, wow, which is great. Any other things that come to mind for you that have been helpful for you in your BD efforts or helpful for you in your communicating with some of the engineering leads? Yeah, I think... Um, Focus. Uh, it's so easy to see, especially in this economy right now. It's a very strong economy. There's a lot of opportunities out there. And so 
um, it's very easy to get distracted mm -hmm. um, by multiple opportunities. Everyone's building, everyone's doing work. Right. Um, busy, busy. Yeah, and you can't be everything to everyone. And so I would, and I encourage our engineers to um, focus. Focus on, I always say, if you're a full-time business development person and you're building new relationships, three to four new relationships within or new clients is really all you can do. Hmm. And that's if you're doing it full time. Right, wow, So it says a lot, yeah. Yeah, so stay focused, pick pick one. If, if, you're, if you're a seller and a doer and you've got project responsibilities, pick one thing and stick to it and be persistent. And sometimes it takes a year or two, hmm. um, and, and that's okay, um, but don't get distracted because hmm. it, uh, I, well, we used to call it the shotgun approach. I grew up right. in Iowa. There's a lot of honey, but um, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, you, you need to stay focused, or or, or you won't be successful. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a great point because I see that all the time where people do a lot of thing, a lot of little things across yep. many areas, but yep. they don't. That's not impactful as if you would just put it all into one that's exactly effort or one right. relationship. Right. And I know you and I talked offline a little bit. That's even something that you focus on in terms of you know, your approach to the kind of projects you want to go after, yes, right? You're, that's you're, right? You're having a strategy and you're staying focused on that strategy yep. as opposed to winging it. And yep. the reason I think that's important for us to just highlight is because as an engineer, you might think, like we talked about early on, that engineering is very checklist and very bang, 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 but business development is not. But that's not necessarily the case. You want to have a strategy. Yes. You want to have an approach. Yes. And you need to have a, some kind of frameworks to work yes. off Yes. Of. Um, I call it thoughtful rigor. Okay. Um, there you go. Where, where you play, you play some rig around it. You have a process, and you work the process. Um, and, and and you still need to be able to pivot, right? Uh, things sure. change within Got clients. Yeah. Um, but don't change don't change your plans just because there's a new shinier object over someplace else. Right. Um, and oftentimes that happens. Or we're looking for immediate results. We get discouraged and we move on. Um, so focus is key. And um, going deep within a client, and by that I mean. Um, cover all levels of the organization. Um, because uh, th think of yourself in your career. If somebody came in and talked to you and then um, uh, later on they came in and talked to your boss and ignored you. Um, right. How would that make you feel? And so oftentimes I think we forget um, everyone's, every, for the most part, pe people are trying to do good things. People are looking after themselves, looking after their careers. And so uh, don't just go to the top. Um, work at, I call it the zipper approach. Make those relationships at every level hmm. um, in the organization. Zip it up. That's great. That's a great approach because what you have to remember is that the people that maybe, if you're a younger professional and you're saying to yourself, well, I'm only yeah. dealing with the younger people, they're not really decision makers, in a couple of years they are going to be they're decision gonna be, makers. Right? Yeah. So there's value in building relationships at the different levels. Um, which again is, is great. So let's let's recap a little bit here sure. and then Laura's going to stay with us and we'll wrap it up with our Take Action Today segment. But we talked about the idea of business development, having frameworks and yep. processes that you can follow. Really important, especially if you're an engineer. That's just going to make it easier for you if you have to start to do business development. We talked about seeking out some training yes. potentially in different yep. business development skills or boot camps depending yes. on what works for you. Your company may have some or you might have to go outside the company. but they were effective uh, for Laura and yeah. certainly helped her. And we talked about building conversational skills. Yes. Being intentional. Yes. Leaving some space in your conversations. Yes. For people to talk to To reciprocate. You. Um, yeah, you don't have to fill the air with uh, hot air all the time. Right. <laughs> let them. Thoughtful pauses. Thoughtful pauses and let them give you information. And then really I think one of the running themes that we talked about quite a bit was being a resource. Yes. Constantly just focus on being a resource for clients, prospective clients, yes. other consultants that you might team with. And if you are consistently a resource, number one, they're going to they're gonna like you for that because you're giving them information, yep. but they're also going to become more comfortable with yes. you. And they're going to trust you. And they're going to trust you. Yep. And when it's time for them to count on someone for a big project, Don't you're going to be there and you're going to be available. So. Once again, we're here with Laura Hughes at Burns Engineering. Stick around. We're going to come back in a minute and wrap this one up with our Take Action Today segment and give you an actionable, something actionable that you can take and do right away. Yep. All right, I'm back with Laura Hughes, Director of Business Development at Burns Engineering. We talked a lot about things you can do as a technical professional or an engineer to build business development skills. Mm -hmm. 
But now to kind of wrap this one up, I'm going to throw one out here at Laura. I'm an engineer. I'm practicing as an engineer. My company approaches me and says, Anthony, we love what you're doing with your mm -hmm. projects, but the bottom line is you need to bring in business. Yeah. What do I do? Where do I start? Uh, so I think the easiest way to start is by getting additional client uh, work from an existing client. Right? Okay. So does your client uh, procure other services? And can you kind of sidestep or get warm introductions into an existing client? That would be the first question. If they want you to go out and start in a new sector or with a new client, then you need to really put some rigor around what clients those are. It's not just who you know or a guy that knows a guy. Um, you need to understand what clients are buying you services, what clients value your services, and what clients fit with the culture of your firm. Um, so if you're looking for new clients, you need to do a little bit of analysis on who you want to target. Um, and don't do too much. Um, pick one or two and right. go deep. Um, that would be my advice. That's great. And so to that point, your company comes to you and says that the first thing I'm going to do, based on what Laura yes. just said, is I'm going to call every one of my existing clients and I'm going to say, yes. how can we help you? Do you have any projects exactly you need some help right. on? Is there a hiccup on a project site that we can help push through for you? I'm going to try to be that resource to my existing clients. That's the number one thing. Get me right out of the gate. And then as I expand and maybe yep. try to get into new sectors, I can try some of these other strategies in terms of yeah. doing some research, keeping it focused and then trying to build a new sector or a new client and yeah. go from there. Yeah, it's always uh, less costly and easier to uh, work within your existing client base and um, offer additional services to existing clients. Awesome. Yep. Well, Laura, thank you for okay. spending thank some time with us here me. on the podcast. These were really helpful strategies for engineers and technical professionals. Listen, I know business development doesn't come natural. Sure. We both started as engineers right. and neither of us are doing engineering right now. <laughs> and it wasn't easy an easy path per se. However, what I can say is that if you are an engineer and you can learn to do business development, the upside is tremendous oh, yeah. and the opportunity is tremendous. So I hope that you take some of these strategies and start to work on that. Uh, until next time, I hope that you continue to engineer your own success. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your comments and or questions in the comments section below this video. Also, if you'd like to view the full show notes for this episode, visit engineeringmanagementinstitute.org or see the link in the video description. There you will find the key points discussed in today's episode as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during the episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering career endeavors.